His name was Jason. Did you guys ever hear about Jason Voorhees? Some say he died, no trace, or he's still out there somewhere seeking revenge on the camp counselors who weren't paying attention. They said that he drowned, but nobody was ever found. Now rumors are abound that he's still roaming around, ready to kill any who pass over his grounds. Wielding the machete with a hockey mask around his head, you better count your friends, cause next minute might be down to one as your numbers get diminished by an unstoppable killer, a villain like no other, with the possible exceptional will of his own mother. Miss Pamela Voorhees was a mum and a half, killed a gaggle of poor teens on her son's behalf till she felt the wrath. The lady who had evaded her, the final girl, took her blade and decapitated her. Jason made sure to waste around the others who fled, now faced with the situation that his mother was dead. But she's in his mind forever, and oh yeah, I never said he made a shrine out of her decomposing and severed head. So if you go down to the woods today, son, keep your wits about you and look for Jason. You're known by his weapon and his mask of choice, out murdering by direction of his master's voice. So don't go skinny dipping, hang on to your kecks, no drugs, drinking, stripping, or premarital sex. Don't go out alone, stay at home till morning. If Crazy Ralph comes around, don't ignore his warning or you're all doomed. Doomed, I say. You'll all be consumed by noon on Friday the 13th, where many residents have died. We need a concise retrospective guide. There's so many to keep track of if you want to delve. So let's take a look back at parts 1 through 12 now. <coughs> <laughs> the first one was the best of an emerging scene. The summer camp romp turned murder spree. Part two is much the same, but now it's actually Jason. There's a higher body count, he wears a sack on his face, and he gets tricked by a vixen as he's fixing to grease her. She wears his mama's jumper and convinces him she's her. Part three, ambitiously screened in 3D. Seems deemed obscene by the BBFC. He got the hockey mask at last, he really needed it. More iconic now than the past film preceding it. Part four, the final chapter. Not really, though. You know, we've got another 34 years to go, and three was surely enough. Why risk another? The others are nothing. A motherfucking Crispin Glover is the one with the best cast, no trace of doubt. It's class. Corey Feldman takes Jason now. And that was the first time that he technically died. Number five tried to hide it and swept him aside. See, the killer wasn't Jason, but someone who imitated him. The fan base didn't rate him. The faker just irritated them. Part six, no more tricks. They did revive him by striking him with lightning. The writing was contrived at them. He was alive again. The fans were happy. They didn't mind that the storyline was crappy, but Jason needed a counterpart like Bell and the Beast did. And seventy when they found a girl with telekinesis. She saved him from the lake before Jason in back here. Part eight's not great. Jason takes Manhattan. The title says it all. It didn't even live up. But Sean is coming home. There's not a man to give up. So part nine was written. Didn't go so well. Well, I wouldn't mind forgetting Jason goes to hell. To say they dropped the shark will be putting it lightly. They really missed the mark. It's not good even slightly. But then part ten. Where the place to next? What about space? Great. Jason X. With the futuristic setting and the fakest technology, I'd actually recommend it and I make no apology. More camp than Crystal Lake, but it's meant to be. And every franchise tries it eventually. Hellraiser, Leprechaun, Critters and Muppets. They all went a bit to space. So Jason above it. He failed going to hell, he's never getting to heaven, but now we're into double figures and it's time for 11. Jason's a deadly bruiser like Conor McGregor, so he faced up to Freddy Krueger like a horror made weather. Freddy was a bastard from the jar start. Jay showed up, stabbed the dream master in the heart with his own glove. The sequel they made as a comic instead. Jason kills Freddy dead, then he steals his head. He puts it next to his mum's in his meager shed, then has a clash with Ash from the evil dead. I'm not even making this up, it's a bit tangential, but I thought I should mention it, because that shit is mental. Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash couldn't happen, so they shoot a reboot, but it was lacking in passion, it was mediocre at best, not completely forgettable, but what should they do next, because a sequel's inevitable, 12 films down, 13 is expected, here's an idea how it can still be effective, a story told from Jason Voorhees' perspective, as he's getting old, no longer feared or even respected, he's struggling and dealing with his evil objective, a mother and over his life, like why was he resurrected, that's what I would make if I had written it my way, they'd probably do the same shit, different Friday. The basis of every entry may be all the same, but Jason's up in the horror movie Hall of Fame next to Chucky Leather, face and face with Pinhead and Freddy, Michael Myers and Candyman, who've been dead already, and continue their reign of terror many years subsequently, and go on living forever in our fear and our memory. Many men have been Jason, but greatest of all minds, his name is Kane Hoddery, nailed it four times, rarely recognised without a face to see, but then otherwise, Friday was the place to be for young stars in the making. Camp Crystal Lake introduced the world to the face of Kevin Bacon, awakened with a spear to the neck, might be fake, but the great Tom Savini's taken up the makeup effects to a bold new level of gore, the likes of which the world had never really seen before. Halloween gets the credit for defining the slash, but 13th did it better by providing the passion for slicing and smashing, stabbing, dicing, and mashing, and a level of blood splashing that was never imagined. Assembling props from the scraps and the rations, and then when that shit drops, splatter flicks for the fashion. Kudos to the camera and DOP, because we've mostly only seen Pamela and POV, so we think the killer is Jason, when really it's fairly daring. The film though famous elements merely a red herring. The first one on its own is an interesting mystery, and how the series has grown is a rich bit of history, but I've said enough. There's just so much that's worth saying. He slayed 170 plus since the first day. But he was a stray vagrant, raised in the worst way. His name was Jason, and today is his birthday. <laughs> Thank you.